Zenless Zone Zero. Hello friends, new game Zenless Zone Zero came out. I played about 10 hours plus since release and I wanted to make a quick video on how I personally feel about the game. So far I am soft stuck before level 26 where I need to spend some more energy to activate the next set of story quests. I ended up with about 5500 polychromes and pulled about 100 times on the master tape and 40 times on banner. I didn't get as lucky so I've been playing around with Coletta. I will talk about general characters and systems later in the video. I want to talk about graphics first. Many would have different opinions about this. Some said it's really bad for a new game, some say it's decent. I think the approach on the graphics is more aimed towards stylization and simplicity. It feels very very clean. For animation though, I believe they have done an outstanding job. This game probably has one of the best character animations. I may estimate some are hand animated with precision to give that cartoony, speedy, exaggerated motions to give that extra excitement in the animation. It looks really good. This is actually pretty rare to see in 3D anime style animations. Something that has a similar animation style will be a recent 3D animation, Girls Band Cry. If I had to point one of the best things about this game, it's definitely the character animation and I respect all the hard work that has been put into this. Next is sound. Like I've mentioned on most of my review videos, I value sound a lot. Regardless of how good the graphics are, bad sound makes any combat feel like wet noodle fight. ZZZ has put an extra attention to details on adding sounds to make the overall fight immersive and truly feel the impact of the hits if you initiate on the enemies. Each weapon has different additive sounds and there are different sound ranges to hard counters and parries to have very strong impactful sounds to get immersed into the action. With amazing animation and sound, I believe this is why the combat feels really really nice in this game. I got a lot of questions about people comparing this with recent similar games like Wuthering Waves. I believe those two are not the subject to compare which is better, but both games excel at two different styles of execution. If I can try to explain, if Wuthering Waves is high APM with skill cancels and party member swapping, ZCC kind of more feels like boxing with jabs and straights with counter punches, where each button presses and attacks have much heavier impact. So they bring different sets of experiences and fun. Zenless Zone Zero has a great camera work and added effects to set great emphasis on weight and power on your attacks. It is also very easy with lenient judgment on parries and dodges as well. So I really enjoyed the whole combat portion of the game for sure. As for the story, I skipped all the dialogue but I watched all the cutscenes, well obviously because the animations are so good. It was definitely a treat and it was more aimed towards a casual happy story to dive in without worry. Some were actually pretty comical and simple to understand. This game is closer to a dungeon crawler with a default city area to go around to access quests and stories. It is aimed towards more casual end and the majority of the systems are really similar to what we are used to. Like most of the resources and tokens are pretty similar from all the past games that we have played. You're basically accessing dungeons and quests to fight and gather resources by spending energy and use them to level up your character, your gear, your skill levels, it's all pretty much the same. And super easily accessible by pressing a couple of buttons. And I'm really glad that if I'm missing a certain item, I can access it really easily by simply clicking the materials that I need. For general content, it's similar to other games as well with main story, exploring, combat, towers, side quests, and minigame arcades. Daily required activities were super light as well, with taking pictures, eating food, etc. You can finish the whole thing in a few minutes. However, I may need to experience this further to see how heavy the time requirement is when you reach the end game. For exploring, other than combat and moving through stages and fights, there's a map mover where you control TVs to move around. It has puzzle mechanics like pushing things around and playing around with explosives like Bomberman. I've seen a lot of people not like this portion of the game, but personally it didn't hinder me too much, but I feel that the general opinion is to decrease the TV activity as a whole. As for business model, I usually buy battle passes and subscriptions, which is what I did. And the general model and gacha system and pities are pretty much the same from the past games. One thing is maybe the gacha animation could have been a little better. I actually didn't know if I got an S or an A. I am planning to play this game at least until I finish the battle passes, because it is a good time frame to really enjoy the core and have fun for the time being. Let's go over the basic information I've learned so far. Since I am new myself, I apologize in advance if any of the information is not clear. Feel free to help me as well if anybody knows additional information and tips on the comments. I really appreciate it. For characters, this game actually doesn't have that many characters and they're categorized in elements, faction, and types. For example, if we see Billy Kid here 
His faction is Cunning Hairs, Physical Element, and Attacker Type. There are a few types. Attack types are focused on DPS. Stuns are focused on Stagger, where monsters have a Stagger Bar where you can stun them to deal additional damage during day state. Supports are buffs, debuffs, and have crowd control like Vacuum. Tankers are high defense agents that are mixed between support and stuns. Anomaly is a new thing where it gives special benefits to set elements with debuffs while building element damage much faster. I'm not aware of this category too much because I don't have an anomaly character. As for elements, there are 5 total. Enemies have a circle meter when attacked with a certain element. Filling it all up grants you additional bonuses. For physical, you deal massive damage with additional stun damage. Fire gives burn damage over time while interrupt types that are weak to it. Ice freezes the target and takes additional crit damage. Lightning gives shock damage over time while interrupts types that are weak to it. Ether takes corruption debuff where enemies take bonus ether damage while interrupts types that are weak to it. For factions, we have Cunning Hairs, Balabok Heavy Industries, Victoria Housekeeping Corporation, Hollow Special Operations Section 6, Sons of Caldon, and Obol Squad. This is very important to know because how the party works is you have three agents assigned as a party. And if there are no connections with elements or faction, you may not get a bonus synergy effect to that character. For example, if I have Coletta, Sokaku, and Nicole team, this button here is where your character's bonus attribute is written. None of these bonuses are activated because any of my characters do not have any connections in elements nor factions. If I switch Sokaku to Billy, you can see Nicole and Billy has their synergies activated. However, in order for Coletta needs to have her synergy activated as well, Billy needs to be a fire type or an ether type from Balabok Heavy Industries. It's not mandatory to think about this to push story because they usually give you trial characters and it's not that difficult, but it's good to plan out your team because you'll have limited resources. Not activating all three, but two is okay as well. Just don't make the same mistake as me where I cannot activate any of my synergies from my pools of agents I've leveled. As for tips planning out your team, the thought process should be this. The standard comp should be stun, attacker, and support or tank or anomaly. Stun is actually pretty important because it gives you DPS time with added bonuses. Whereas supports not only buffs or debuffs, they often have vacuum to gather monsters in one place as well. With this in mind, unless you have pulled a different support, Nicole is probably the safest bet to spend resources on because she is a really great support class. She has vacuum with ether bonus damage buffs with defense debuffs too. You also have Rina with armor penetration and additional lightning damage buff. So Kaku with attack buff, ice damage buffs, and ice resistance debuffs and parry point decreases. And Lucy with attack buffs and crit damage buffs and co-op damage. Based on what you have pulled for attacker and who you want to use for attacker, it is best to plan out your team members accordingly. For example, if you have gotten Ellen, Sokaku and Lycon would be the great team for all synergies active. You can also swap Sokaku with Rina due to her being in Victoria faction. Or swap Lycon with Anbi with Rina as support to enable all party synergies. If complicated, since attacker synergy is priority, you can focus on just activating Ellen's synergy. I don't know what will be the best teams are for now, but a good team should follow these fundamentals. And since most of you are going to pull for Ellen, maybe you should try to get another agent that falls under Ellen's category. Let's talk about Bang Boos a little bit. Other than that, I wish Hoyoverse to sell them as plushies, there are supports for your team. There are categories as elements, factions, and types. Their full potential is activated with a condition. For example, if you see a personal butler here, it requires you to have at least two Victoria housekeeping agents to get benefits from his ability. So you would need to plan this out as well. All of them are organized in three big categories. For me, I haven't set the five star Bangu myself due to not knowing what team I'm going to push for. With that, this wraps up what I wanted to talk about Zenless Zone Zero. Hope you guys are having fun at the game as much as I do. Let me know what you think about this game. As always, thanks for watching. Bye bye.